Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I thought I'd pop by and just create a card. Something I'm just going to create just because there is no reason. Um, so I just thought I'd pop by and create something just because I feel like it. Not because it's a snippet, not because it's a deadline, just because. So I've got a piece of Pink Frog Smooth White card and it's three and a half inches by seven inches. So sort of the elongated sort of DL um, size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hexapetalistic stamp set, stamp set 978, because I want to use this flower. I haven't used uh, much yet. I haven't had chance because I've done, used so many different stamps lately. So I thought we'll we'll have a go with the hexapetalistic. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some low tack tape and I'm just going to apply that to my skin just to make sure you can just apply it to clothes if you wish, just to make sure it's definitely low tack. So wonderful, just a few hairs there, lovely, just to add to the project. So we'll just place that there. And then I often sort of spend a little bit of time deciding whether I want more than just that. So let's just have a look at what two. Yes, that will give me some nice sort of depth. So I'm using sort of two layers of the washi and just making sure that that's low tack. Let's just apply that washi there. Try not to reach over my phone, which I do quite frequently. And let me just try and measure that for you so you've got an idea. So that washi, it's only approximate, so which I can't see, is around about one and three quarter inches, just under, that is, one and three quarter inches, just under. One. Yeah, it's under actually. But you get the idea. It's in between one and a half and one and three quarters. But it doesn't matter as long as you sort of leave an area that you've got masked off. It doesn't matter what size it is. So what I'm going to do then is I just picked out, I think my card's going to be monochromatic as in one tone, um, and I picked out Salty Ocean. It was the first colour I got to, so I thought, you know, let's just work with it. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use the Wonder of Nature stencil, my stencil Hash 160, just to give me some background detail. I only want a touch of background detail. Now I need to try and keep this in camera, which is very difficult when you've already taped this down. So what we do is we move it because you can't see what I'm doing. So let's just move that out of the way. So what I'm going to do is take my salty ocean and I'm just going to apply the ink just randomly to certain areas of the stencil. And I've given that a really good inking on the stencil. And I love it because with the oxides, we don't have to rush that process. So just apply a reasonable layer of ink. If you don't like it too dark, then obviously you can use the second generation print. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my water spritzer and I'm just going to spritz it a couple of times. So one, two, three, four. So I've just spritzed that four times. And what I'm going to do before I put it on the card is I'm just going to go around the outside edge to make sure there's no ink just around that outside edge. So just remove, just in case there's any ink just around the outside edge. So I'm just removing that. And I can see that I've got some moisture, lovely moisture on there. So I can see that the Distress Oxide is going to work because I can see, you can see it's shining there. So I can see that I've got plenty of moisture on there. 
so let's there we go so obviously where the low tack tape is the ink is not going to be on the card I'm going to take a piece of kitchen roll and I just take a piece of kitchen roll because if any of the water moves and seeps out through the stencil this just catches that extra moisture and I just like to allow it just to sit on there just to give it a little bit of time to absorb into the card now you can do a second generation print with this after you've done your first print because there's a lot of ink on there. So it just mops up a little bit of that ink and I don't rush the process, I just give it time just to absorb on there. And you can see there's plenty of ink on here. So let's just get another piece of card. So let's just create a second generation print and again I don't have to rush I can just take my time and what I can do is just take the ink off the low tack tape just just remove that so that you don't end up smudging that everywhere let's just just wipe that and then you just stay it stays clean so what I'm going to do is just spritz this stencil once again and you're going to get a second generation print and I'm just going to place this on this scrap of card and I didn't need to wipe the edges of the stencil because there's hardly anything on there now let's just and we've got a beautiful second generation print you could probably get a very pale third generation print as well. Just so you can see that this is the second generation print and still quite, quite a good color for second generation. So we'll just move that out of the way and we'll just allow this just to, to dry a moment. So whilst that does that, I'm going to get my water brush and again, it's no good there, Tracy, because we can't see what we're doing. Let's just move this down here just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do then is just take my water brush. I have to make sure it's clean because Tracy often has some red on her brush. Now, just making sure that that water brush is clean. Just give that. And I'm just going to add a little touch of clean water to my non-stick craft sheet. And just pick up a little bit of that water. And I'm just going to sort of bleed out some of the colour. Just a little bit of the colour. Just bleed that out a little bit. It's just going to be very subtle but I'm just going to bleed out a little bit of the colour just in a sum of the open areas and it'll be very pale but it will be visible and again I will try to lift that up just so that you can see that so I'm just going into the open areas I've literally got a tiny bit of water just in there just to activate some of that that color and it just gives a little bit of shading just to the card and what I'm going to do is I've got the edges here of my low tack tape so I'm going to take a little bit of that water and just pick up some of the salty ocean and I'm going to just start off the washi tape and just bring in a little bit of that colour and again just around the bottom now you could blend the ink if you wished but I want it to look a little bit more sort of watery than blended 
so I want it to look a little bit more watery. Let's just add a little bit more water. So I don't want it to appear sort of blended. I want it to look sort of watercoloured. So just blend that out. Let's just take, and I'm just blending that out to nothing. And then let's just take that up just to blend it a little bit more. So I'll just wipe that bit of colour that I've got on my non-stick craft sheet. And then what I'm going to do is use a little, a dry piece of the kitchen roll and just dab up any of the excess moisture, just to dab that up. And then I'm going to take the flower, the large focal image, Take this okay. and I can, again I can use my acetate just to see where I want my flower which I'm going to add here and you can see I am going to add a 3d element as well you could add the circular one as well the circular one looks really nice as well that's the hardest bit is making the decision go with this Tracy go with this stick with your original idea it's terrible isn't it when you you've got so many choices 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 right so I'm going to take this really bold floral I've got my new um, Versifying Claire, which I'm going to put the date on, which I can't remember what the date is. What date is it? Oh, yes, it's the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July to my American followers. Of course it is. So 4th of July. 23. There we go. So I'm just going to ink my beautiful floral now because this is going to be underneath it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because this is going to be underneath because I'm going to add a top layer so let's just add round about there do we think yeah let's add it around about there lovely so we'll just apply that ink and I'm just going to allow that just to sit on there just for a few moments just because we've got that distress oxide under there so we just need to make sure that it absorbs because the card is less absorbent now because of that oxide layer so just allow that just to sit on there give it a little bit of time you can lift those acrylic blocks from All and Create just to give you the beautiful detail. Let me just see if I can move that down just so that you can see that. Just beautiful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this out of the way. Let's grab a scrap of card. And then I can stamp my flower head separately and I love it if sometimes when I'm I'm sort of sometimes I can get a bit stressed when when there's lots of deadlines coming out and sometimes if I feel like that I sort of put everything away and I just make a card for the sake of making one for the enjoyment of making a card and not because it's needed for a deadline just because I feel like making one and that's what I'm doing here I'm just doing it because I feel like making it and that makes me happy and sometimes that distresses me when I've got so many deadlines because it just takes me away from thinking about what I've got to do next so it's lovely sometimes just to just to switch off so I'm going to add colour and then I will cut out but what I'm going to do is grab a piece of copy of paper.
just so that we can block that image. Bear with me. There we go. It's just moving a few bits out of the way just so that we're a little bit tidier. now shuffling my chair because I can't get comfortable so I'm just going to give that image a little bit of a blot just to blot up a little bit of that extra ink just in case it's still you know it has a good open time so we just want to make sure that that's completely dry I'm then going to use my Ecoline pens which I adore 522 which is turquoise blue and Prussian blue which is 508 I just love these pens and as you saw before I used blue on this pen that's absolutely fine let's remove this stamp like so just remove that remove the ink from my fingers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with the lighter color which is the turquoise blue and I'm just going to add a little bit. And these sort of petals, the way I've, I've drawn them, it, it sort of, it makes me want to just flick the ink. It's a nice, easy way to colour by just sort of using a flicking motion. It, it applies the ink beautifully. And also, it stops me in a way pressing too hard. The Ecoline pens are very juicy, which is lovely. They're very easy to use. So no difficult colouring here. I'm just taking my time just to add that layer of colour. And then I'm going to add a little bit to the end of the petals as well to bring a bit of colour into there. There we go. So just adding a touch of colour because I want to leave a little bit of an area in the sort of central area a little bit lighter just so that the flower then appears to shine if that makes sense but we'll see and obviously when you look at it like that it, it's it doesn't look brilliant so what I do is I'm going to apply some of that turquoise on there just add a little bit of water and then what I do is I go in with a watery mix of the same colour and then I can just blend the colours out just blend that out a little bit and I like to take my time with the colouring. I don't like to rush the process. Especially when I want to some I want I want a project, you know, to have some quality about it. I don't want to sort of rush it and it looks rushed. So just add so I'm just leaving a little bit of a white area. Just towards the center of each petal just a little tiny bit of the area and I use the watery down mix because it just it's it's like an, another color down like a tone down and it just blends it beautifully so that we don't have any harsh lines because the harsh lines they don't look very attractive. So let's add a little tiny bit of blue there, just so that it looks like we haven't missed that. There we go. So what I've got now is I've got my first layer of colour. And I'm then going to use the Prussian blue. And what I'm going to do is just do a tiny flick of that so it's just a tiny amount of the colour but what that does is it gives a little bit of depth 
to the design. So I'm just colouring that nice and lightly just to give it a touch of the colour. Do you know, I woke up early today and I decided to clean the conservatory. Goodness knows why I decided to clean the conservatory because as far as I'm concerned, that was the stupidest idea I've ever had. You know, it's one of them thankless tasks cleaning the conservatory because I cleaned the webs up because you get lots of cobwebs in the conservatory because the windows are open quite frequently. And it's as if the spiders, etc., they watch me clean and they're like, you fool, as if that's going to last. So I clean and it's like within 20 minutes, they're making the webs again. So they have a good laugh at me really for cleaning the conservatory. So I did, I spent an hour and a half cleaning the conservatory. I was so hot just so that the spiders can create the same web. It's just, just a thankless task, really. But you do it because it makes you feel good, doesn't it? If you've cleaned up. So I actually got up early specifically to do that. <laughs> Hilarious. Because I've got a lovely day out tomorrow. I haven't had a day out for ages. So I've got a little bit of a, a day out tomorrow with my friend we're going garden shopping and maybe have a little bit of lunch out before the next deadline strike so i've timed that quite well because more deadlines are looming so it's quite nice i can just have that a little bit of time out and it just if you take your time the flower just looks beautiful And you can continue, if you wish, to go in with a little bit more of the darker colour. Or you can just use it on here so that you have a watery down version of that second colour. And just move it up the flower a little bit further. Some of that darker, darker tones. So because you're watering it down, it's it's like you're working with a, another pen as well. So just water that down. Just to give a little bit more of that darker colour. And there's always one little petal that I actually miss. And when you look at your flower in real life, you can really see... A difference when you just take your time by adding that little bit of darkness. Let's add a little bit of darkness up there. It's really worth it just taking your time. Plus I can lose myself in colouring. It's just lovely and relaxing. And that's the other reason I came up and did a card as well because I thought it was quite scary that I might do some more tidying. I don't want to do any more tidying. It's not riveting at all. Although I should get it out of the way, I suppose, before the next deadlines arrive through the post. So just... So I'm going to cut out this flower and I'm going to um, leave a little white border. Now, this is a generic flower, so it can be anything you want. Red, sky blue, pink, doesn't matter. It can be any colour. I've gone for sort of quite a monochromatic, but if you wanted to change it a little bit, you could make it red. But sometimes, if I just want a simple idea, sometimes monochromatic is, is very pleasing to the eye, quite calming, and it can be quite striking by working sort of with the same colour, with, you know, different tones of the same colour. Just cut that out. So I'm just cutting the flower head. And if you want to add more colour to that flower, it, it's a good idea just to allow your card just to rest a little bit. You don't want to break down those fibres too much, too quickly. 
so that you end up breaking down the card and you end up with bits of fibres of card breaking away. You don't want that. So sometimes it's a good idea just to let that card rest a little bit, especially when you're using moisture, and then go and add another layer. You'll find it adds a wonderful depth to your card if you apply a second layer of colour once it has dried. If you want to add even more depth, you can have, add a touch of your pencil, the pigment from your pencils, just to add a little bit more depth to that flower. But what I like about the Eco Lines is it gives really good results simply. You know, you don't have to worry too much. You can still look good with some simple, simple techniques. Sometimes the simplest ideas are the best, I think. Plus, whilst you're cutting your flower out, your background that you created, that's also resting as well. So that if you want to add more detail, again, you don't break that card down too much. it so let's just get rid of that a little bit of card there and you can just see there's a lovely with leaving a little bit of that white area it adds a, a real bit of brightness to that so I'm then going to use my gel pen so it's just a white gel pen of Get which make it is now. I think it might be Pentel. I always forget what make it is. I can't read the writing. Um, but yes, so I'm using my white gel pen and I'm just going to add little dots of white just to just lift that flower up a little bit, just to lift the central area just so that it looks a little bit more 3D. And I'm just dotting that gel pen, just so you can see, just makes it look a little bit more 3D. If you just go and add that. Now it's best if you let this dry before you try adding any of the white. I can just, I think it's okay I can add a little few stripes of that white just to those lined areas. What I would do is I would let the card, the flower that you've cut out, dry a little bit more and then go back in and add a little bit more of those white areas. And if you let it dry, they will show up a little bit more. But I will show you this. So again, you would add layers of the white, just so that you can see that. But it looks a little bit more 3D. So let's bring this in. So we bring in our card and we've got our flower head there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little miniatures which is miniatures stamp set 756. I love the little miniatures on these. So I'll just put the stamp back. You know, I'll say I'll use the stamp and then I just put it back. Hilarious. Don't do anything with it, Tracy. Oh, dear me. Right. Now I want my morning mist ink pad. And I'm just going to use this stamp set as is. But I'm going to make sure it's the right way up. Let me just make sure. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping. And it's going to be very subtle stamping, but I will be able to see it. Just to add little touches of the stamping to my background. And there's pigeons 
flying by the outside of my uh, craft window. It's very off-putting when you start to see wings flapping because I keep thinking they're in the room. So let's just add a little bit more. So I once I take this off, you can see what we've got. You'll be able to see exactly what we've got because the flower will go over the top of our original flower like this and we'll raise it a little bit and that will just pop a little bit more. So it'll just pop a little bit more. Do I want to take this off now? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to take the washi away and I'm just going to remove that gently. But because I've put it on my hand, it's coming away rather nicely. There we go. So it just gives me that open area. And it doesn't matter if you've got a few little bits in there, it's absolutely fine. Just take off that. Let's bring in our card. And this is going to go here, like so, which just stands out beautifully. And let's add a little bit of our... Do I want a little bit of the white ink? No, I don't think I do. So I'm going to add my white cotton just to give a little bit of texture behind my design. There we go. I'm just going to pull that out just so that it definitely shows behind the flower, just so that it's a little bit more spread out. And when you see it in the flesh, when you make the card in the flesh, you can see the cotton. So I'm just going to pinch my little flower just in a few areas, just to give it a little bit more texture. And then I'm going to add a really good dollop of pin flare glue. And it just, you need to make sure that you press it down a little bit so that it definitely grabs that cotton. There we go. And then I was really pleased because All and Create have now got my little mouse back in stock. Yay! So my little cute mouse, stamp set 811, is now back in stock and it's on the All and Create website under allandcreate.com and it's back in stock. So I could use my mice again. Yippee! Small things amuse small minds. But I love my little mouse, so I've got to bring him back in again. I just adore this little mouse. It just makes me so happy. I just think he's lovely. So just to celebrate that he's back in stock, I'm going to use both of them. So let's just, so I've got my flower there, sort of this side. I don't want to, it, it's sort of more balanced if I put it on this side. So let's ink those little mouse up, mice, not mouse, mice, because we've got two. Just giving that a really good inking because I'm using, oh, and it'll just, poor little mouse. It's so grubby at the back it's not sticking poor thing so we'll try that again and that's another another good pointer actually I don't think that that's another good pointer when you're using your stamps if you've used them quite frequently like me and you haven't given them a clean on the reverse when you turn them over, turn them over away from your card so that they don't drop on your card just to make sure that they're going to be okay. And then I hold my breath for some strange reason, nobody knows why, before I place them down. I don't know why I hold my breath, but I hold my breath. So just allow those to soak in to the card. The card is absorbent now because we don't have that distress oxide underneath. So the card is now absorbent. So the ink will absorb into that card. 
but you just need to give it a couple of seconds for it to do its thing. You don't need to press super hard, you just need to give it a couple of seconds for it to do its thing. Now, I must have a little tiny, yes I have, there's a little tiny uh, thread of cotton just on there. Great, I think my micron pens are downstairs, are they? Bear with me. Oh no, they're here, that's jolly good. So just colour that in. There we go. Got a little bit of cotton on there, so. And really, you also need to let that ink dry as well before you try to add your white touches. Just going to place that little mouse back. Because I don't want to I don't want to lose them. There we go. And then I'm going to add little little touches of white just to my little mouse. Just so that you can see the little mice. I've got little touches of white on there. And I'm then going to add a little bit of the grey stamping just to my background. And I'm, I'm hardly pressing. I'm pressing very lightly. I will lift it up because it's going to be difficult for you to see it from camera, from that from that far away. So just adding a little bit of the stamping just to the inside area. Just so you can see there's just a subtle touch of stamping there, just so that you can you can see that. And what I'm going to do is just take my fan brush and I'll take my Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink and we're just going to spritz that with water. You don't really need much. And then just add a few little splatters just to your card. Let's bring this down. You don't need much water because you're just adding a few little splatters and they're, they're going to be delicate. They're not, it's not overpowering your design. She says, yes, only need a little bit of water and then wets it three times. There we go. Just so we've got that. Let's just clean that. my brush which you've never seen before rarely clean my brush just so that you can see what we have at the moment so then what I'm going to do is use one of the sentiments from the hexapetalistic because it's got some beautiful sentiments on there feed the soul nurture a garden plant a garden plant happiness beauty surrounds us um, gardens add life to your years. They ju it's lovely. Let me just... Which one does this one? Feed the soul, nurture a garden. I just love that. I'm going to use that one. And you can use a lined um, glass mat if you want to make sure that you place it on straight. You can use your glass mat. I'm just going to ink that up with black ink and I don't need to drown it with ink because it's a very fine sentiment. Just. I do take a while just to, to place the sentiment down, that's just me, just to make sure I've got the placement right. 
and I'm just holding that on there just again so that that sentiment absorbs into the cardstock and again you don't need to press too hard on that stamp set because it's a fine detail so you don't need to press too hard that on that I'm then going to add a little bit of grey just under the mice, just a little touch, a little touch under the flower. There we go. And then just grab a little bit of water, which is obviously going to be very blue. Let's just make sure that we clean that brush. You can obviously have several brushes on the go at one time. Just need a touch. Just to give them a little bit of grounding. Just so that that grounds it a little bit. Let's just move that out of the way. And you could add some of your little I've got some tiny ants here and you do know that why not so I've got some tiny little ants on the miniature stamp set let's bring that in so that you can just see you can, oh typical it's behind the barcode here there's two little ants I'm going to ink the little ants because I emptied, I emptied a pot yesterday. I only want one ant, I've decided. So I was emptying a pot yesterday. It's one of those pots. I don't know whether you do this in the garden, but sometimes there's always one pot I miss in the garden that needs refreshing or revamping or whatever. And I emptied the pot, and I am not exaggerating, hundreds, hundreds if not thousands of ants rushed out the pot and up my top that's loose fitting. So I had ants everywhere. Absolutely. I've now inked. No, no, we'll put it. I want it that way. So let's just add the ant. So yes, I had ants absolutely everywhere. All the way over my legs, up my arms. Because you know what it's like when you disturb a, a nest, they just scurry everywhere. But look, look at the little de look at the oh, I love the little ant. <laughs> Sorry, small things amuse small minds. A little bit of white there. A little bit of white there. Oh yes, I'm 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 loving the ant. I've got a little ant there, and you've got some little. You know, little hairs, a little bee, a little, uh, be two little beetles, and she even says insect on there. I love that little set. Such a lovely little set. But I'm sorry, the ant had to make an appearance. Just love that little ant. <laughs> Very nice. So what I'm going to do then, obviously you will let this, this dry. And you will then go in with a little bit more layers of the white because now that the ink has dried a little bit, it will appear more white because you're not trying to apply it to something that is soaking wet like I was the first time. So it's worthwhile just going back in and just adding a little touch of the white, just to your flower. Just take your time. I'm then going to add some splatters. So I'm shaking my Posca pen. And then what I do is I just press it a couple of times just to make sure that's flowing. And then I'll just add. Now the only reason sometimes that I'll have difficulty is my camera is quite low down so that you've got a better view. So sometimes I can't flick 
I have to be careful wear a flick or else you end up going dizzy as I'm doing it but once you start the pen flowing it will splatter beautifully but you need to get that flow going just so that you can see the little and it's just lovely just creating just because you want to create so this was three and a half by seven and I've created a card blank four by seven and a half and I want to leave it on that white on white just because it pops a little bit more so let's just add that to my card let's just add this card blank and I, I think eventually with the second generation print that I did I think I will do one with the circular part of the hexapetalistic stamp now don't try like me to stick things down when you've got white Posca pen on that card you know it's best if you just let that white Posca pen just dry and give it time to dry just and I just take a few minutes just to allow that adhesive just to grab hold of the background just so you can see with it with the white on white it's sort of very fresh looking and I really love that so I hope you've enjoyed that and what my plan will be is I'll probably create another card with the second generation. But what I'll do is this time, when I've got my spare time, I will add probably some of these circles to this. Let's, shall we just we spend five minutes stamping just so I can show you. So that's your completed card. And what I'll probably do is do this. I'd probably um, do this in, colour this in red. I'll actually cut the card down to the size I want. I have no idea what the size is. Oh, put it on a bigger acrylic block, Tracy. I have no idea what the size is. Because it was just a scrap of card. But I often use scraps of card and just cut them down to fit what I want. Now, if I just take this, just so you know that I'm not going to waste this. So if I start sort of here, like so, and just add that to my background, because I can cut the flowers out, and I think on this one, I'll cut the flowers out and I'll colour them in red. But I just wanted to show you where I was going with this one. I'm not going to finish this card. I'm just showing you where I would go with it. But it will appear on Facebook when I've coloured the flowers in red. Just to give something a little bit different. But you can see the beauty of that. And if I wanted to... Cord. Hmm. Let's just ink it again. And it's a generous sized stamp. So just be generous with your inking. You know, don't scrimp on that inking. So just take my time and it doesn't have to be, there we go, so add that one, and I'm just allowing that ink just to sit on there, just so that it grabs, it doesn't matter if the flowers aren't perfect because I'm probably going to cut out the flowers 
and just add them in red. But can you see, you can extend this design. So again, I could then go down and just add, oh, it just makes me happy this does. So let's just take half that. So then I can just add, let me make sure, always ink more than you need because it doesn't matter if it goes over your desk. You can just wipe that up. That doesn't matter one bit. So then just bring this like that and just add that there. And it means that you're using this stamp to extend your design. Or if you wanted to, you could use this so this was in the background and then use the other flower in the foreground. Just love it. And what I'm going to do, just so that you can see that and you can see where I've gone, you can even add it further down here if you wish, further down here, or you could even... the flower here in red so that you've got that in the background and that flower on the top just in red but I'm going to decide what I'm going to do later I just wanted to show you where I was going with that because I'm definitely going to work with that and I'm either going to cut out the flowers and colour them in red so it's got a real pop a real dramatic or I'm going to add the flower separately in red but just so you can see where I was going. And I probably may trim this down because it'll be layered onto a card. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I'll bring in the card that we created just so that you can see that. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I shall see you all soon. Love to all. Bye for now.